week's episode of This Is Only A Test is brought to you by Ops Genie. Incidents happen. Thankfully, Ops Genie empowers devs and ops teams to plan for service disruptions and stay in control during incidents. It also gives teams the power to respond quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues and helps notify all the right people through a smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up for a free company account and add up to five team members. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with Ops Genie. Hey, let's start the show. For Thursday, November 8th, Jeremy's not here, so wish us luck. It's This Is Only A Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Right. <laughs> Look at that fucking squirrel on my bird feeder. And then suddenly, the Enterprise D's bridge. You know, I learned something from last week's show. What William. did you learn, Kishore Hari? I learned that the laugh was Gary's laugh. I, oh. You know, I've been on the show for like three years. First time, oh. I'm still learning things about the intro song that a, plays. A laugh that evil can only be Gary's laugh. <laughs> Welcome into This Is Only a Test. As I mentioned, Jeremy's not here, so we've already lost half our audience, if not more. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of people who are going to be really excited to see me here, I know. <laughs> Hi, fans. And all of those people exist on YouTube in yeah. the comment section. Will Smith is here uh, while Norm is still out being... Paternalizing. Yeah. Pater- is that the verb? I think so. He's, he's dad-splaining. Dad-splaining. Ooh. Yes, I love it. I do like that. And we have a special guest this week. It's Trace Dominguez. Hello. That's For- me. First time on this podcast, it right? It is my first what? time on this podcast. Yeah. I've never been on. You yeah. should come on. Well, the- I did. First and last time on the podcast, oh, all in one day. It. It's gonna be amazing. It. It's well, a you're, good run. you're gonna learn that we kind of create like sort of a weather system of of male funk in here in this room. Mm. So it's sort of, I think you'll realize, you know, two hours in, that, that there's all sorts of mistakes. There's on no this vents. <laughs> Well, that would be you know bad for audio, right? You Having should put vents in here. I feel like this is a safe room that has been turned into a podcast studio. I I've gotten really good at working in rooms that get very warm as they're closed. Like like I don't know when what I, that when means. I, when I, I don't when know I play if, yeah, games yeah, on I Twitch, I close the door to my oh, office, mm-hmm, and we sure. don't have we have central heating but no central air. So two giant computers with huge CPUs and big video cards running to do the streaming stuff. And it gets Quit to be bragging. 90 degrees yeah, in about 40 minutes. You're also framing this as a skill of some kind, and I don't think that's what this is. You just, I you, think you just walk, walk into a room, and it ends up it being just hot. happens to oh, be hot in I'm there. full of hot air. Well, there's that, too. Yeah, well, it's well established. You left that out of the things that make hot air in the room as well. There's like the two computers, and there's all the GPUs, and we'll, then, we'll, then there's just you talking to yourself. We'll get to Will hotboxing momentarily, but our guest, <laughs> Trace, is here, and we should get to know you. Trace, you've appeared on a few tested videos. I have been in a few tested videos. Mm-hmm. I've done some building with friends, some Lego building. I did a, one with... The blue Volkswagen Beetle, which is now sitting on my shelf. Did I we, love it so much. Did we do the sound, sand crawler? Did you come for that one? I don't know. I don't think Norman, so. No, I didn't, do, I didn't come for that one. You were in an opposite, uh, episode of Offworld where you talked about Space Camp. I went to Space Camp when I was a space, kid. Ooh. Yeah, and so I, they talked about the movie Space Camp, and we all watched it, Simone and... Uh, and and Ariel Waldman and I, so but Trace is, is known on the internet. How do people know you? Uh, I used to do a little show called D News, uh, Discovery News, and then that changed the name to Seeker eventually. So I helped create that show and in 2012, and been making science videos ever since. All right, get ready. We're gonna play Get to Know Trace in five questions. Da, da, so, da, 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 da. Oh, that's a good theme song for that. It's a pretty good song, yeah. yeah thanks. So because you mentioned producing all these shows, how many shows have you produced, Trace? Uh, individual episodes? Uh, sure. Gosh, I know I've written more than a thousand. I know that's way, that's I've too been much science. in as many as 2,000. In sure. terms of number that I specifically produced overall, probably in the hundreds. Did you ever consider just doing the shows without writing them? Because that's what we do that's, here. You know what? I did consider that, but I was always afraid I would mis- like do exactly what I just did. I would mess up the numbers or the data. Uh, and people get really mad when you do that on science videos, which totally yeah, makes sense. I, I can get see it. That. But come on, 
cut me a break. I did a lot of them. Sometimes they mess up. I did Google you to try to come up with these questions. And Ooh. and then on like the third page of results where, where you get, you know, the best results on yeah. Google, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was somebody that's like complaining about a video that you did about CrossFit. Yes. And, and they emailed you. They're like, we have emailed the host and writer, Trace Dominguez, to get an official response on this slander against CrossFit science. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is probably totally full of shit. This we ended up pulling that video down because they threatened to sue us. Because it turns out, yeah, it turns out CrossFit is not just like a type of workout, like yeah, Pilates, it's also a, it's also a, it's a registered it's a cult, trademark. And it's a registered trademark, so yeah. they're like, you're infringing on our trademark by using mm. our name. Yeah. Um, but we were... Quoting this science study um, by one of the the National Association for Sports Workouts or something like that, and they w had studied CrossFit, and they said, well, it can cause all of these things, and you get a slightly higher rate of injury. It was a really small sample, but we were talking about, like, the question of whether it is dangerous or not. Um, we ended up saying, like, yeah, it can be potentially, but, you know, you should probably do this. And then we ended up going through their CrossFit manual and saying, like, all of the things they were refuting – we're in their own manuals. Well, so. I look forward to mm. the lawsuit coming in the coming days yeah, around this podcast. Great. It's going to be really look, fun. All right. An uh, another couple questions. Do you even fife, bro? I super fife. Yeah. Talk yeah, about that. Like, like, I, I should have brought my fife. Oh, like, well. like, yeah. So I used to work uh, in college at a historic site called Mackinac State Historic Parks, northern Michigan, an island between the peninsulas. And it was a fort built in the 1780s, but we were portraying the 1880s. And uh, I was bored a lot because, you know, you end up talking to people. But if you're there from May until October, sometimes it's raining. People don't show up. And I like music. So I started to teach myself these historic instruments that the soldiers that were there would have learned to play. And one of those was the fife. It's like a flute. It's got six holes in it. And uh, it's really loud. So is it, where does it fit in the recorder melodica yeah, scale? Give, give us a, a range from plastic recorder up to Captain Picard inner light. <laughs> So the, Captain Picard played, I think, the tin whistle, which I also can play, also known as a it penny has a real whistle. Name? Yeah. yeah, and so it's got also got six holes. It's played very similarly to a recorder, but the recorder would be like a step up because it has another hole in the back. The recorder has a hole does, in, does under the, your does thumb. Does the recorder have a reed, or is it just using no? The, it's no? Just like okay. a whistle-based system, okay. just like the tin whistle is. And then when you when when you add that extra hole in the back, you get slightly more range. So the recorder is a little more complicated. The fife has three octaves of range. Range. Um, I think it's a B flat fife, the one that I used to play, because that was the one that they would have used in the army for signaling. Um, but yeah, three octaves is quite a bit. You can you can play a lot of songs with three octaves. I can also play the bugle, and that only gets five notes, so well, not as many songs. <laughs> welcome to Fife Talk, where we wow. only talk about fifes, <laughs> but don't actually play it. All right, we're going to do these la last few a little faster. Um, fill in the blank. Always be excited. Oh. Yeah. I was going to go with pooping. Oh. Mm. That's a weird one coming from you, Will. Well, that is know. a weird one. Yeah. Is that like a kid thing? Like little it's, kids are always it's pooping. It's just important to be regular. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Okay. We were going for testing, but okay. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, we're that's going the right for answer? Testing. Oh, yeah. darn. I went with excited because that's kind of my thing. That is your brand. Yeah. Oh, electric scooters or electric skateboards? Scooters. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong. It's uh, electric uh, unicycles. Ooh. Sorry. That no, was thank the, you. <laughs> I've never unicycled. I honestly I did that don't know how, how to unicycle. Show up. I can teach you how. It'll take oh, like my God. six weeks. You'll break your knees a couple of times. Oh, it's really painful. That sounds and, horrible. But fun once you get going. One of my best friend's dad growing up, he used to unicycle to the mailbox, which was across mm -hmm. a two-lane like road, one of the main thoroughfares yeah. in our small town. So he would unicycle across, get the mail, like roll back and forth while he waited for traffic, and then mm -hmm. unicycle back to his house. It was like forty feet. I don't know why he did it. I think he was showing it's practice. Off. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really you, good. If you ride a unicycle around San Francisco long enough, eventually somebody will throw a mostly full can of Coke at you. Has this happened? This sounds yes, autobiographical. Like happened. regular yes. Coke or Mexican Coke? Diet. Ooh, Ooh, diet. diet. Coke. A can of Diet Coke. Oh, well, well, I'm sorry bad, that then. I did that then. Two thirds of a can. <laughs> Look, I was riding my electric unicycle up to the Whole Foods to get some kombucha, and you, who would have thought that some monster would say, get off that unicycle, you effing hippie, and throw a Diet Coke at I you? I think kombucha is like. Last year, you should be getting matcha. Well, this now. was five years ago. Oh, got it. So I was ahead wow, of the curve. Wow, you were really ahead five years and ago. And that, that 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 Whole Foods over on uh, Potrero Hill. Yeah, that's they a were nice early Whole on Foods. The kombucha. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not you know, even kombucha gonna... is just like apple cider vinegar, though. It's right? gross. Yeah, it's really disgusting. Yeah, it is gross. It's not. I'm good. not even going to ask the last question because I think the last we, one? I can look the last at this. one was going to be we surveyed a hundred people and. And what do you think the percent of time that Norm looks at his phone during the day is? That's like ninety six. <sighs> Gosh, uh, 
Definitely 85 percent of the 85 percent of his waking hours because at night he's not looking at it are we no. not we're not counting are you sure about that no i've never been around him when yeah. he's asleep actually i've never seen norm sleep i don't think he sleeps i mean he's pretty sure he, he doesn't well, he thought he was a robot for a while he you know surprisingly you, mean you don't anymore because i'm still not convinced i mean theoretically he's made a, a human I, child i need to see that baby as, <laughs> as yeah. proof of not robot i need i need some genetics oddly the answer is 110 percent. i don't know how that's possible but that's what it came out at you know story this week all right we haven't talked about halloween no though you recorded a podcast last week you didn't talk about halloween and all the halloween goodness i just work here you were in a post candy glow jeremy made the list i didn't get any candy we're talking about halloween how did you not get candy i I don't have children around i think we recorded it before halloween actually okay they just released it after look the whole this whole podcast industry is made of lies it's just a racket guess what it's not thursday for us (gasps) Oh, what we day don't know is what it? happened. It's, I don't know. I, what I have day a prediction. I think Jeff Sessions is going to resign on Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it's not really going to be a res- res- resignation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my God. What did you do for Halloween, Will? I trick or treated with my daughter. Yeah. Did you go as anything? I did. <gasps> what would you? But she at? screwed me at the last minute. Wow. So we had a whole team costume where my where she was going to be Fix It Felix. Oh. I was going to be did talk about Wreck-It this last Ralph. Week. Yeah. And then my wife has a Vanellope costume, Vanellope von Schwitz, mm-hmm. uh, all from the fantastic movie Wreck It Ralph. And she decided at the last minute she wanted to wear her Violet costume instead that she wore. Violet to the Beauregard? Violet uh, Parr from The Incredibles. Yeah. Okay, that she makes wore more the sense. Incredibles mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. uh, uh, intro. Anyway, yeah. That's so pretty she, cool. She costume, wore that, by the way. But she already, I already had my Wreck It Ralph hair. So I was pretty committed to like wearing a costume at that point because it was all straight up. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to look like a doofus walking around with dumb hair. So I just wore the Ralph costume even though she wasn't actually in a matching costume. So then I looked like a you kind just of self-absorbed like parent. Yeah. Just a fool looking, out there in the world. Taking, taking all the looks from the kids. There were a lot of incredible families walking around my neighborhood. So good. It's yeah. getting better. I feel like the whole cosplay habit has ended up invading families. Did you mean there are a lot of incredible families? Like... I mean, families like, dressed up as the Incredibles. The that's Parr what family. I was asking. Oh, yeah, I like, it was the there other were way. a I lot thought... of Incredibles. Is, is, is. There were a lot of Incredibles. Is. I huh. thought you meant there were just a lot of good costumes. No, I, I saw a lot. Of I good agree costumes. with both. You you could go to the Disney store and buy a pretty good Incredible costume for fifty or sixty bucks. I think. So we saw a lot of like Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, uh, Violet, Dash, and Jack Jack costumes. Jack Jack is this? It's a good costume for a family with a baby. If you I have a baby, like. it's a perfect costume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just well, paint your baby red. No big deal. Paint, yeah, or metal. Or paint metal. Ba- yeah, metal baby ice red. Paint your baby metallic. Yeah. You heard it here first. Paint your baby red. <laughs> or, you know, get, get that, get the stuntman fire stuff, the fire safe gel, sure. and just have a flaming baby. I'm sure baby. that'll be totally that fine. Completely it safe. Isn't as effective it's as totally you think it safe. is. safe. 100%. I did that on a Discovery show. Really? You did? <laughs> Where I set Anthony Carboni's um, inner arm on fire and forgot oh, to put remember. him out. Yeah, he has and a he scar had the fire from that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and no hair grows there anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. he's fine. But now he's got a story. Yeah, he has a story. Uh, my son went as Gandhi Zombie, or Zombie Gandhi. That's pretty good. Mm. How did that go? I, you mentioned that yeah. to me, and so, I was like, this is going to be so controversial. I, I have some, well, he had been reading a book about Mahatma Gandhi, and mm-hmm. he was like, I want to go as this character. I'm like, I support that. And then he also plays way too much Plants vs. Zombies, and he's like, I want to go as a zombie. And then he put those two things together, and I felt weird. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that's very weird, because zombies are inherently violent, right? Not necessarily. How dare you cast aspersions that way? I think zombie. Uh, I think that's not a all safe zombies. Crazy. <laughs> not all zombies are violent. T- show me a zombie that's not violent. Well, I mean, your definition of violent—they're just hunting for food. Yeah. Yeah. It, is the is the leopard that is hunting yeah. for its dinner violent? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it, fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when I was playing Red Dead last night and the bear ripped my throat out, I felt like that was pretty violent. It was yeah. just it was just defending its cubs. It's also just natural. Uh, I have some advice for parents out there. Bald caps and children do not go well together. Oh, it seems like I, it'd be hilarious, I though. Spent a, I spent a good hour and a half trying to apply a bald cap in, like, the way that you're supposed to. Yeah, with the spirit and, gum and all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I ha- even had, like, liquid latex to actually blend in the line across his head. It just 
didn't take the way you want it to because the child is never willing to sit still while the liquid latex is drying on his head. Mm -hmm. And then the sort of the blending of the makeup where you're like, this is only going to take another hour of makeup work for this to get. Yeah, that didn't end up going well. That being said, I got I did pony up for the high end mustache, which is made from human hair. Ooh, gross. It was amazing. This is it pretty bushy? Did you No, keep no, it? I because that's not the Mahatma's way. He had much more of a straight mustache, oh. so I found like a nice gray human hair mustache. And you still have it. You, it's, oh, re, yeah. it's reusable. I would be wearing it right I was now. Ask, where if is I it? didn't Why have my own it? mustache. Well, so so I experimented with the with the skin cap when I was in probably 8th grade, which was old enough that it was my responsibility to do it and and put it on myself and make it up. And even as like the pastiest white kid in Northeast Tennessee, getting the skin tone of the the pale white skin cap and then my face to match, basically impossible. I feel like you just challenged like a whole quarter of Tennessee. Like, no, I was the pastiest one. I mean, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's it's. But the point is, it's hard. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. And then it's always lumpy in weird places because like yeah. there's hair. You should have. Did you, did you think about just shaving his head? We actually talked about it. Okay. My wife was not interested in that um. conversation. <laughs> but we did make a, uh, he had a brain that he held, like actually had. It was a wax mold of a brain that he carried around that was nice and pink. And That's then, pretty good. Yeah, and he built his own uh, walking stick in a woodworking um, class that he did oh, last that's summer. that's good. Yeah, he had it all going on. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And how was well, the reaction? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, how was it received? San Francisco likes mashup costumes. That's what I have to say to you. Okay. It, oh. That one was for the adults a little bit. Yeah. Did he go over okay at school? Because he wore it to school too, right? He just went as regular Gandhi at school. Oh, okay. Oh. That's a safer choice. Yeah. yeah. And that felt a little like, I think the kids were like, what is this? His friends did not dig that costume. Hmm. They didn't understand who Gandhi was? Yeah. I think they're like, why is Ira dressed in robes? There needs to be a superhero team that involves Gandhi. Like, they need to induct him into the Legion of Extraordinary Gentlemen or something. I think he's already there. He is there. an extraordinary yeah. gentleman. I think he's already yes. there. This is a long way around to talking about what happened last weekend, um, where Will went to extraordinary lengths for the children's by playing video games. I did something I probably would have done anyway, but also we raised no, money for kids. No, you would kids. not have done this anyway. Okay, my wife wouldn't have let me do it anyway. But given the opportunity, I would have played video games for 25 hours straight, um, which is what we did from Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific St- Daylight Time to Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Wow. We drew the short straw and got the shift that's the the 25-hour one because the Daylight Savings Time. Um, but yeah, we played uh, played a lot of games. We raised down a little bit over seventeen thousand dollars for kids. Wow! Um, and then this was all part of the Giant Bomb team, former tested compatriots. Um, and then after that, I got to watch my friend Alex Navarro play drums for twenty four hours. He played rock band drums for twenty four hours. It's just dangerous what he was doing. I I feel Does like he, he had was, a lot of blisters. He had a blister that popped almost immediately. Oh god! Um, wow. And then you know CBS Interactive, they just don't have. They don't have the kind of band-aids you need to seal up a blister and then continue drumming. So yeah. he just he pushed through the pain. Um, he got he, a blister on his blister. He ended up raising a hundred grand over Holy that twenty-four wow. hours. I think that the Giant Bomb team is right around three hundred thousand dollars now. They're trying to get they're like Isn't 293. That the most or something. Yeah, they they beat Salesforce. They which is great. Thanks. Good job. Good job, guys. Put Salesforce <laughs> where they belong. Um, they beat D and D Dungeons and Dragons. Which I think is just Dungeons wow. and Dragons aficionados, oh. and um, we're the the point is they were raising money for Children's Miracle Network, which is a uh, charity that provides funds to children's hospitals around the country. And most of that money, I think, goes to providing um, support for families that either don't have enough insurance or don't yeah. have any insurance to. Uh, That's to exactly be able it. to visit kids in the hospital or take care of themselves, well, yeah. And it's stuff that you don't you don't think about, like if you have to go to MD Anderson or something like that for some for some treatment. Like it cost an incredible amount of money to stay to both maintain your home and then essentially move to Houston for six months or you know, move to Nashville to go to Vanderbilt or move to mm-hmm. Baltimore to go to Johns Hopkins. And, and that stuff's really expensive. Even if you're pretty well off and have good insurance, you still end up having to pay for that. So that's awesome. Um, it's and, a good charity. And uh, if, for the insiders out there, yes. uh, Will got to 17,000 basically by just challenging his audience to beat. Uh, the number that was set by his friend Dave Lang from Giant Bomb. <laughs> and I just want to know, did Dave Lang, has he reached out with any thoughts? Dave Lang has been out of the country and I haven't heard from him yet. 
I'm sure I'll hear from him at some point. He the, never keeps his opinions the, the close to the chest. Donations yet. at one point, Trace, just basically kept saying, like, this is all not for the children. This is just against Dave Lang. We want to screw Dave Lang over and get more money uh, raised than does him. Does Dave know this? I, it's, Has it he remains heard? to be seen. I sent him a message. I was like, I want you to hear this like from a me. Friendly. Hello. Yeah. Hi, I, Dave. Hey, How something are you? happened <laughs> when I was real tired. And, um, By the way, if you have a lot of Twitter messages that say spite Dave Lang. Yeah. 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 Don't uh, check so, your DMs for a bit. <laughs> so uh, Dave, uh, Dave is the CEO of a company called, or C something O of the company called Iron Galaxy. They do a lot of, um, they make a lot of games and do ports and stuff like that as well for other people. Um, but he also tends to play the heel a mm. lot um, in both things like the League of Heels, the fake wrestling thing that happens at PAX now, a bunch of other places. So it, you know, I figured it was probably he'll be okay, okay with, with it. Then. Yeah. yeah, it's for the because it's for the kids. <laughs> it's yeah. for the kids. We ended up doubling the money that he raised based on wow. my, the audience's uh, dislike of Dave. So it all works out. It worked out. It was actually really great. I'm thoroughly impressed with your commitment, Will, because at some point. I, I was like, oh, in the middle of the night, Will's just going to fall asleep in that chair. But you kept going. Nope. No sleeping. Well, how um, did you, uh, what's your staying awake strategy for time travel day? Because that's what I call daylight savings same day, time travel day. Because you get one o'clock mm, twice. Well, so um, my, I mean, we, this, was no, this was no new thing. We've done Oktobercast before mm -hmm. where we did, um, you know, three 24-hour interview shows, basically. It turns out it's a lot easier to play video games for 24 hours than sit and talk to people for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, the beautiful thing about the Oktobercast is we had... Uh, Patrick Norton used to come in for the late, late, late night shift. He always brought donuts and would keep the conversation going for us when we were the most broken at 4 o'clock really in the morning. He's really good at that. It's a beautiful man. Um, with this, we just played games that were easier to kind of manage, and and, mm. and it was fine. My favorite Will Jiff came from uh, October cast. Oh, God. It was Veronica Belmont slapping you in the face. Perfect. Yeah, that's the second or third time that's happened. <laughs> was it to keep you awake, or was it... I think um, I lost a... I'm pretty I sure you lost. I, no, no. I think I think that was a if we reach this total in the next before Veronica has to leave, she'll hit me in the face. Ouch. Yeah. But sacrificing your face for the. For, she didn't pull back. Was this either. for the kids as well? This was for uh, this uh, that year was maybe. See, we did a different charity every year for Octobercast. It was either Doctors Without Borders, um, Child's Play, the Penny Arcade, Children's Hospital Toy Charity, or. Um, I can't remember the other one. It wasn't Red Cross, but it was something like a disaster yeah. relief. It, I was trying to think of a pun for each one. So Red Cross, Red Face, obviously yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. And Doctors Without Borders, your yeah. face had no borders. Yeah, no. She she didn't pull back. Like she didn't like when Norm hits you in the face, he kind of he checks his, his swing a little bit. But Veronica just really let me have it. What kind I of show are you guys running here? I hitting each other all the time. We had a high speed camera. I, oh, okay. oh I, yeah, that's always fun. I just Actually. imagine that when Veronica hit you, she just went, Comcast cares, bitch. That was before that, wasn't it? Maybe not. <laughs> we don't have a ton of news, so we're going to fly through this stuff. Announcement came down. Vince Gilligan is going to continue the Breaking Bad franchise by creating a movie. We don't know if it's a TV movie or a movie movie, uh, but it's going to be set in the universe. We don't know if Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul are going to be in it, but indications are they're going to continue that story. Do you want this? I'm probably okay. With or without? You're okay yeah, getting whatever. it? Either way. Either. Yeah, I, I want it. I think it'd be cool. I, th I think we should get a movie of just the Aztec. The story of his car, mm -hmm. the... The, the Aztec. Because so, that car is ugly as sin, but it was definitely a character in that like show. Like a Christine yeah. style. Yeah, I just want to follow that car around. Where'd it go? What happened what's, to the RV at the end so of the show? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what if somebody bought that and was, like, driving out on a vacation sometime, opened up the panel underneath, and they're like, what's this Holy blue stuff? What, what happened if I smoke it? Yeah. And then, you know, a whole new story emerges. Obviously a very discerning individual. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I found this thing in my RV that I bought used. Yeah, you should probably smoke this. I should smoke it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you <laughs> find something in your RV, that's the rule. That's it's what you're supposed to do. This could be yeah. a regular. Not, not, maybe not. Gotta not, smoke it. not nibble on it. One way to find out. You gotta smoke it. Absolutely. The What's weird is that the... The show ended on basically one of the most, I think, perfect endings for a big scale show like that because yep. it's hard to hit the landing. So one, the weird thing to me is like, where did, uh, I want this too. Do I want some follow on or just a different prequel? I think mm. it has to be prequel because I don't want that ending to get chopped up in my brain. I mean, yeah. I, 
I, I that's that's like when you have a perfect ending. Like I don't want more Mad Men, right? That show ended yeah. perfectly. I don't feel like there needs to be more Breaking Bad. I don't. I think we're. I mean, if you're going to do yeah. prequels, that's fine. But I don't want to know. Right, what some happens. kind of side stories. Yeah, I mean, you have Better Call Saul because the character was so good, you could follow them further. But what other characters could you follow further in Breaking Bad? Like, you could follow Jesse, I guess. But I think his story sort of. Did we get the full like formation of uh, of of the of the Gus Fring gangs? Like, I mean, that's the thing is you yeah. could do a, you mm-hmm. could do a, a movie about one of the one of the season villains. Mm-hmm. I haven't stayed in touch with Better Call Saul, so maybe all of this either. is happening. We just don't know it. But a movie means something contained. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know. There are gaps in the timeline of that show that you could fill with a two hour piece. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't like I don't I like him learning how to teach chemistry, like going through teacher credentialing. I would be into that show. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Right. People are going to line up for that yeah, one. I know. <laughs> Big lines on opening night. Like him learning. Oh, I really need a glass bottom. Oh, uh, this is bottom. this is what you route, use a round bottom glass for. How do you end up with Erlenmeyer as a name? <laughs> yeah, and just like a real exposition on that. All right. Uh, moving on, there's just a couple other stories in pop culture. American Vandal, which we've talked about a lot on this podcast, was canceled. I think, yeah, it's shocking. It's shocking. It's almost as shocking as the opening to the show. I feel like they should do an American Vandal wrap-up show about itself getting canceled. Well, you know what I want? I So I've been listening to The Good Place, the podcast, which is the official podcast of The Good so Place. So good. Mark is, Evan Jackson has the best voice he, for all of podcasting. Like, all, all their podcasts are garbage, basically, uh, when compared to one hosted by him. Uh, but no, that that like I want that kind of podcast where they go through and break down each episode about American Vandal because I want to know more about how that sh- like the making of like how they how they did that show. Um, I'm really bummed that it's canceled. I think that the second season is probably better than the first season. You and that's really it? saying something. Yeah, it worth it. I haven't I, watched it. I would just watch the first the season. Only, the only reason I hadn't watched it yet, the if you watch the first ep- the first episode of the second season is one of the shittiest episodes of TV I've ever seen. And it's fantastic. It's really brilliant. <laughs> that that are, really turned okay, that yeah. sentence. That was where I, I mean, it is you literally the turn. shittiest episode of TV I've ever uh, seen. Okay, there's a lot of poop. And and you've watched South Park, so we're talking about a lot of way poop. more than South Park. Mm. I think uh, I've thought this for a while. I think poop is the new sex. You know, they used to say sex sells. I think we're kind of like, oh, well, maybe not anymore. I'm not saying poop sells, but it, like, gets people excited. Well, and, you know, people talk about poop a lot on TV now because it's more taboo than talking about sex. Every generation has to open up new frontiers. And this and, one is... And uh, the, the Gen Z post-millennials are the poop generation. I guess. Well, we have a yeah. new leader in the clubhouse for a title of this episode. Thanks, Trace. <laughs> 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 uh, and, and just a general question. We're entering the holiday season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is upon us, which means everything that comes in terms of TV is about to be wailed upon us. Charlie Brown doing everything. Sure. All, Grinch. God, we're getting There's another more Grinch, Grinch posters. Yep. Is Don't it a like live it. action Grinch? No. It's another animated one. That's okay. Like mm. his his origin story, and we don't need this. No. Is this a good time for TV? Do you enjoy this? Do you have any favorites that emerge? Good time with? of year. Yeah. Do you like? Do you go the to Trolls any... Holiday Special? Really, is a delight. It's really great. Everybody should check that out. I actually really like that one too. I yeah. love Christmas television show specials. Honestly, I really do. It's a guilty pleasure. All of the West Wing ones, I always oh, go God. back to. They're just all so good, and some of them are really sad, and some of them are really exciting. Yeah. Like I don't know. I think it's nice for television to have a break from the monotony of let's tell a story, especially in twenty-three minute like 20 episode seasons having something that's like a Thanksgiving episode, a Halloween episode. And then once you start jumping sharks, musical episodes and all sorts of other things, right? It's like it's nice to have that kind of annual Did they do a musical cadence. West Wing episode? I don't think they did. They got goodness, infected by but vampires I wouldn't have been surprised in season 7 if they decided yeah. to do that, but they um, did they never did. Thank no goodness. No musical West Wing episodes in my head. This isn't good. Let's uh, tr- let's look. call up Bradley yep. Wafer can do whatever he wants as far as I'm Let's concerned. Let's call up Molina and get him to do it on the West Wing Weekly. They'll Just do that. Sing the whole thing. He'll he'll. Harry Cash would probably kill that yeah. episode. Yeah. See, there you go. The um, Charlie Brown Christmas episode is great. It's terrific. Nightmare it is Before very Christmas good. is very good. That remains a fantastic Christmas film. Charlie Brown is it a Brown Christmas is film overrated. or is it a Halloween film care. or is it both? It's both. I think it's. It's both. a Christmas yeah. movie. 
I think it's, a Christmas I think you movie. can watch yeah. it both times, though. You can watch it on I'm Halloween gonna, and be like, I'm ready for Christmas now. I'm going to watch Die Hard and Batman Returns, both. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Both, both great classic Christmas, Christmas movies. movies. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Big, you know, Lethal Weapon also starts being at yeah, Christmas time. I don't love that one for Christmas. It's not a yeah. Christmas movie, but, but it, it's, is a poop it does movie. start at Christmas. It has, it? it has one of the best toilet scenes I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. All of these movies that you're referring to, well, most of them, we're doing in my Alamo science series. So we have we have plane, trains, and automobiles oh, this month so because it's the best Thanksgiving movie in existence. Then we have Die Hard, Gremlins, and Home Alone next month. That's pretty great. Huh. It's not so bad. Man. I have to. I have to get back to you about that. Actually, <laughs> yeah, you do. I want to be on that. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Is fantastic. I've never yeah. seen it. Oh, I know. I'm You're sorry. To derail I'm the conversation. getting up and leaving I this room. I want to see it. I've just never I, sat down to see because I'm not just going to watch it myself. I want to watch it with people who appreciate it too. Okay. Even though I don't have watched it, so I'll I be right over. What's the science in planes, trains, and automobiles? I don't know. Sure. Shower rings. Okay, fair. That works. <laughs> Should we pour one out for Flickr? I don't think Flickr died recently. I think Flickr has been yeah. dead for a long time and just no one noticed. It was well, a vegetable. Well, the announcement yeah. came down this week that Flickr is changing its terms of service, I guess, and saying that you can only have a thousand photos on their normal plan. Otherwise, you have to pay for it. And they're going to delete those extra photos for you because thank you for being a customer of Flickr. So this this is, just to be clear, after maybe eight years ago, they said, hey, we're going to be the place that you back up your photos. So just upload all of your photos to us. We're going to store them in the cloud for free at their original resolutions. It's a good place for you to save your camera roll so that you don't ever lose it if you lose your phone. Yeah, Flickr did indicate that it's not going to impact the Creative Commons of photos that were uploaded uh, before the announcement was made. So you'll still be able to search like a huge library of Creative Commons photos because I think that's the other thing about Flickr. Flickr has become an incredible repository for free images mm-hmm. on the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it, it, but it kind of stalled. People don't use it as much anymore. So it's good. it was good until like 2011, maybe 2012. Big science institutions. So like NASA still mm-hmm. populates their Flickr with a lot of stuff. And really you know, that's like a historical record. That's true. Right, so I, I lament this loss. I actually think this is a, a bigger deal. You're not wrong. It's been coming for a long time. We know that. But Flickr has always been the best part of Yahoo, and so I'm, I'm trying to. Delicious like, was pretty good too. Oh, but that died oh, so long wow. ago. I, I forgot know. that existed. Ripped delicious. God, do you remember oh, when man. bookmarks were a big deal? Yeah. But delicious was delicious was kind of a precursor to Reddit in in a good way because it was a way to share your bookmarks. It just there was no. There wasn't like a public view. Mm-hmm. It was just private sharing of book. It was like yeah. it was like everybody's page was their own private Reddit, and I could share something. Yeah. And you were my friend. You could see what I was sharing, yeah. and vice versa. You can see shadows so of it in other places, like yeah. Reddit and even Tumblr, where it's like, "Oh, I like this site. I like this thing." Yeah. You know? Yeah. But nothing really ever replaced Delicious after Yahoo unceremoniously killed it. Yeah. And Flickr has been replaced in a lot of different ways yeah. by like people's. Google Photos. I don't need to put them out onto Flickr so that Flickr gets people to come and see their. Their photos, I can just store them somewhere else in the cloud for free. Well, like right? privately. Yeah, and I don't have to worry about other people seeing my, my, my nudie pics accidentally if I tie it to my. No, I'm sorry, sorry to get guys. Don't say I'm, have, yeah, I'm old. getting concerned. Married people are weird. <laughs> oh, married people are old. <laughs> yeah, we're um, just old. You guys the, don't. You're not, you're not we use the pics. internet in very different ways. <laughs> um, and so, so one of the things, like, so the the upshot of this is that they're charging fifty bucks a year now for unlimited service. Um, you get ad-free browsing, and you get some metrics on that. At the same time, I could pay the same money basically to Google for Google Photos or to Apple for Apple Photos or I assume probably to Samsung for Samsung Photos, which I bet is not a great product, but whatever, and get the exact same service but without any kind of sharing, well, also accidentally the fear. posting a picture of your wiener. Uh, yeah. Also, just the sense, the fear that it's going to collapse because like – you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Flickr sold off. And this is a fine OAuth company, yeah. uh, Verizon Media Group, I oh, think. F- fair enough. Yeah. Solid. All right. So solid. You mentioned Do- Samsung. We should talk about the Samsung announcement that happened this morning when we're recording it. They came out with a new phone, question mark, tablet, question they a, mark. They had a press conference. Trace, you looked at this. What- I looked at it. Samsung's got a new phone. It folds. That's about all I know. 
Uh, I saw a GIF of it. I'm a GIF guy. I know you're a GIF guy, but I'm just That's saying. It's okay. I don't uh, hate you. Good. Great. Thanks. Um, yeah, but it folds. Um, you know what it reminds me of, funnily enough? You remember the the Microsoft Courier project they had like a decade ago? Yeah, it was the thing that, uh, what's his name, who made the Xbox work right, on next? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks sort of like some of the, the concept tribe. images sort of look like that, where it, it folds in the middle of a, of a page. The question I have is, I, I like, you said phone? Because... It's if not it's a like phone. A, yeah, like it's more of a. It's a tablet. Well, tablet, but Samsung sort of does turn tablets into phones. That's kind of like their a fablet. No, don't say that word here. Fabu- um, so, fabulous. That's what I meant. So the interesting thing about this is, unlike like the old PDAs that have a physical hinge, this actually is folding on what I assume is an OLED screen, mm-hmm. a thin film screen. Um, which I have a lot of questions about the longevity of that fold. Um, but I mean. I, I guess it's interesting. I, I just am fundamentally uninterested in Samsung devices because well, so, they run Samsung software. Well, that, that's fine. They come with bloatware. But getting past the bloatware, the actual internals tend to be fairly uh, interesting and, yeah. and high end. So I actually think, first of all, like, can we address the weird name for this? It's not the Royale. It's the Royal. What The Royal? Royal. Royal. The Royal. It has roll in it. It roll ha- oil? Roll oil? What is this roll name? Roll oil. Roy oil. It's like, oh. it's, so it's a, a... Rollable OLED kind yeah, of? Yeah, rollable OLED? No, no, that's no, terrible. No, no, no. The Royal FlexPal is a different company. That's, oh, a, that's a different, different company. company. That's, okay. the, that's the other one. Whew. That's the outside display thing that's weird and is probably not real and is never going... I mean, so it may ship, okay. but it's going to be like oh, eight people will be so able to buy it. It's like an essential-ish type situation. That's so weird. It's this a royal with cheese. I they also yes. don't they seem to really one. have like a good. They have a live demo of it that they showed off. Oop. But I was I was about to open that live demo, but and then so forgot my strange. It's it looks really small. That's the thing that I noticed is if I think of how big my hand is versus the device, the screen itself seems kind of weird size wise. Well, but it's hard to tell because it's dark. But so so the thing that. Like the thing that's interesting to me about this is that if I could conceivably have like an iPhone five size device that I can then fold out and make into a big boy mm-hmm. to watch video or Useful. play games or whatever on that sounds pretty cool. Maybe even yeah. drawing. Like Super I'd love great. to be able to do some sketching and yeah. and even, even though, like your big big ten yeah, I got and, the max, 10S max I got the maximus is here. pretty much the minimum size I would want to try to use a, a stylus on. Yeah, yeah I don't but even know if I want to. You're gonna have to deal with the the thick boy. Um, factor here. This is going to be a thick thing for it to unfold like that. And you end up with like a clutch. You're just carrying around like a purse. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people put their phones in those goofy wallets with the flip thing on the front. That's though. true. It's yeah. true. Those I are, mean, those those are a lot thicker. Loves those. But if you put the wallet on this one, then not only do you have a really thick wallet, but then you have a really thick phone. So then you're like, yeah, this is the Costanza wallet. I was just going to say that you're going to sit oh, on it and wallet? you're going to yeah. get you know so many problems with your butt. This, this thing, this thing, it looks really. It still looks real prototypey to me with the square edges yeah. and the big thick fascia and all that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't. Well, even the announcement video, they don't really show you close ups. It's Mm-mm. it's him holding the phone and like mm-hmm. it's obscured, right? Holding the phone, right? Yeah. Who knows if it's the phone or if it's just like. Did they move it around? Oh, they, I didn't watch it. They're saying it, so. that's in a case. So, yeah. And they call this the Infinity Flex display. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued. I would go to a store and I would look at it and play with it. I don't know if, how I'd feel about having one, depending on how it's implemented. I, I, I don't know how many times you can fold it before you start getting, like, breakage and it's 1500. creases. It's just like a battery. You can charge it 1,500 times, the fold it 1,500 foldable times. Foldable tech is not interesting to me in a phone, but the actual foldable screen in other situations is much more interesting to me. Flexible display and, like, mm-hmm. Agreed. and TV and other um, worlds seems way interesting. Well, Advertising is going to love it. Think of all the places you can put screens now. Smack it up on the wall. Well, yeah. we, we saw years and years ago a demo at CES of a screen that just slid out of a thing. Yeah. So it got to be like 21 by 9 aspect yeah. ratio and it shot back in. It was normal phone. Earth Final Conflict style. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's really cool. Um, the other thing to, to note about this is because it's flexible, it can't. the screen actually can't be covered with glass. So glass is really nice for screens because it doesn't scratch very much. It's really robust and it doesn't like, you know, get get uh, 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 hazy in sun and all the things that happen to polycarb and, and polymers over time. I'm, I'm very interested. Like if you look at, say, a 3DS touchscreen, 
that's more than a few years old, they get scratched and really gross and hard to see yeah. because the plastic doesn't hold up particularly and well. They're hard to clean because because yeah. plastic's a lot more porous, so mm-hmm. it soaks up all your nastiness that's on your human well fingers. And you put alcohol on certain times. You know, you, you use the wrong solvent on a plastic, and it's going to go real bad for you. Yeah. So I'm I'm really interested to see how this whole thing shakes out. Yeah. Uh, Chrome is furthering its commitment to uh, no obtrusive ads. I, I think Chrome, the l- latest build, actually actively blocks intrusive ads that try to pop up windows and autoplay in some cases and disable them. Now Google has announced that they're going to take that a step farther by fully blocking sites that keep doing this and violate this idea of what, um, what a good ad experience is. And the question that brought up in my mind, so hooray, because the web experience, I think particularly on our local newspaper, is one of the worst sites on the internet, the San Francisco Chronicle. But uh, are you comfortable with this going this far where it's going to either issue a warning um, yeah. about pages that do this yeah if, if this is how you get people to stop doing shitty full page ads that take over your screen and take over your you know do bad things or run malware like actually mine for bitcoin or ethereum on your computer while you're checking their their hot takes yeah fine let them let them burn this will this will get some this will get the if this doesn't affect change nothing will and i mean also at the same time google has to be <laughs> feeling heat from because like Brave, the the use of Brave, which is an alt web browser that basically mm-hmm. blocks everything by default, is on the uptick, and they have to be looking at maintaining their market share with Chrome, because um, you know as always, it's a lot of the, data. Yeah, the company that controls the browser market controls most of the web, mm-hmm. and uh, but Google's an advertising company too, so at some point, like how much are they sort of spiting themselves? Well, theoretically, Google sells good ads, not bad ads. So you know, it, it's. Look, if you look at the ads that you get that are bad, you're not getting them from double click. Probably you're getting them from some third or fourth rate third party mm-hmm. fill in the. Hey, the your last flash few, browser yeah. needs updating. Exactly. Hey, hey, hey. The, Ugh. Yeah. Just don't don't. Uh, yeah. Ads Come on are, an iPad, you idiot. Don't have you, a flash browser. You should get a flash browser for iPad. <laughs> it's a much better way to browse them. Remember when we had Flash? Flash might have been when a that good was a thing. Discussion when that been, <laughs> it turns out Flash might have been okay. Who knew? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually okay with Flash being gone still. I'm still on that side. All right. We're going to talk about games. We're gonna, did you talk about the mess that was BlizzCon last no. week? No, that didn't happen, right? That happened yet. All right. Let us talk about one of the crazier announcements and then one of the greatest questions that has ever happened at a game announcement ever did you, you see this i i think it was i just watched the aftermath it was rhetorical uh well it, we should mention that at blizzcon blizzard announced mobile diablo Woo. that i'm went, super excited for them really i am okay you are the as one a person switch, as on a the switch internet. as a switch owner you know it's not that kind of mobile diablo it's no, your phone the, the switch one that they're announcing oh, okay oh, yeah. this is Sorry, different that's what i meant yeah wait a minute uh Will, can you take us through the reaction to this announcement? Well, um, the internet is full of people that feel very entitled about things. And when <laughs> Blizzard had teased a Diablo announcement leading up to this, they had a session of, about Diablo immediately following the keynote. And then they said, hey, this isn't Diablo 4, but nobody paid attention to that at all. Uh, and then they announced Diablo for phones and the entitled gamer contingent on the internet, which probably is a pretty small minority of people that are just very vocal but it's it's difficult to get a good sense for that I, don't I, at me by the way i i flipped I do, out <laughs> i don't totally agree with your take like it, there's no doubt that there are some entitled gamers out there but this game is also just microtransaction mobile diablo do you know that that's what they sort of indicated that there would be microtransactions in the game i, I you know i tend I look at, I mean, there were a lot of hot takes about this. Yeah. They were mostly of the, the uninformed and bad variety from what I read. I didn't, I didn't delve too deep into it because quite frankly, I don't care. But, um, like I tend, Blizzard has a really good history of killing things that are bad and only releasing things that are actually good. Yeah, that they work at launch. And until, well, not, not just that they work at launch, but they are active, like yeah, they're good games. working, Activision ships games that work, Right. <laughs> EA, not so much. No. Ubi, usually few Assassin's Creed games here and there are a little messed up. Usually they ship stuff that works. Activate Blizzard, 
typically ships things that are actually good. Mm-hmm. Overwatch. That's a good game. Yeah. Hearthstone. Even Hearthstone. Good yeah. game. Good game. Uh, the the their Dota thing, uh, Breath of Storm, b- b- beneath the that their Dota yeah. thing. People like that. Mm. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it seems good. Wow. Wow's good. They killed StarCraft Ghost because it wasn't good even after they showed it E3 for a few years. Yeah. Like they've killed a ton of games that didn't match meet muster. And and like just so there's two things that happen when these kind of announcements come out. One is like, oh my god, the Diablo guys have been making this instead of making a Diablo 4 for me. Look, game cycles take a long time. If you want to have the people that work on Diablo 3 work on Diablo 4, there's almost always going to be a period of time at the beginning of that cycle where the Diablo 4 engine is not ready yet and therefore there's not a ton of ton of stuff that the literal hundreds of people that make art for these big AAA games need to know to be able to start making art for the games. So either they have to work on something else or they all get fired. And like we don't want them all to get fired. We want we want there no. to be continuity from one game to the next. So they work on other things. They work on Overwatch. They work on Hearthstone. They work on the the Dota thing. The limited edition resealable or re re releasable like figurines yeah. and things, depending on what art they do. They work on Warcraft. We love all they work those on things. the Warcraft three remaster. Right. They yeah. work on the Starcraft yes. remaster. They work on the Diablo remaster. Exactly. And like, oh, it's gonna be more than eight hundred by six hundred now. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. All, all of this is is fine to a to a point. But okay. are you excited about Diablo Mobile? I'll I'll download it and try it. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I gotta say I'm not super excited about it. I, that play, game I played Animal sh- Crossing for like a month, and then I decided to stop playing it on mobile. But uh-huh. I want—I wanted to try it. I played Dungeon Keeper for a couple of months. Yeah, I did too. It yeah, that fun. game wasn't good. That it was, was bad. Good. It was a bad early mobile microtransaction mm-hmm. game. A whale hunter is what I call those. Mm-hmm. I. I have to imagine that at this point, Diablo is looking at games like Clash Royale and the games that are out there that are successful and not soup, just mostly evil instead of totally evil. And and is going to do like who knows what they're going to do. Hearthstone was free to play. People are like, oh my god, the Blizzard's making free to play games. This is a disaster. And then it turned out to be more or less okay. And I think people might not be estimating the number of people inside of Blizzard who likely agree with many of the people outside of Blizzard. The people who are telling you that this mobile game is the future of Blizzard, which I don't think I heard. I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't think anybody who actually works at Blizzard also believes that. But likely the marketing department wants you to think that and the PR department wants you to think that because they're not going to like say, hey, we're going to release this shitty game. I don't think you're going to like it, but, uh, you know, we can put anything out there. They're going to put it out. They're going to buy whatever we put out. There. They're going to put out a game. Well, they're going to put the force these, of their company all the behind whales. it. We're going to get all that big whale money. We're going to get all them. We'll be buying Diablo hats and Diablo staffs, and we can get ahead of uh, of what's his name, the guy that sits in the in the town and then sucks all the souls out of people. And oh, you, you mean get Chad? A, yeah, Chad, yeah, yeah, Chad the Diablo yeah, man. Chad the Diablo guy. Yeah, you can get the Diablo hat for your for your pet, and uh, he's going to walk around. Then he's going to be the devil, and uh, Bobby Kotick's going to be in this game too. It's real good. You'll the, like it. These gamer impressions. Are astounding. Oh, that was, that I was, am, just to be clear, that was a are, marketing department of Blizzard yeah, impression, yeah, not yeah, a yeah, gamer yeah, okay, impression. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just to clarify, I just want to be clear on that. But likely somebody there, got fired because of this already. Well, or at probably, least reprimanded. Unfortunately. And, well, it, there is a rumor. Some executive. There is you know. a rumor out there that Kotaku put, point out, pull, uh, put out that Diablo 4 is actually in the works. And they had initially said it was going to be released. Of course, at Bl- of course it is. Of course, right? Diablo Four is in the works. <laughs> so, hey, and yeah, they, we got this really successful no. game. Should we make another one? So, B- they, forty million people bought the last <laughs> one, but uh, I don't know. Let's uh, just see if we can get ninety-nine cents each from like three hundred people. Let's put it on a phone first. Yeah, let's see if I that mean, works. The phones, the phones are all the big doings. That's where all the, the those big games launch now. Everybody's got a phone. I have a phone. I have made mistakes. <laughs> Look, uh, they're no, gonna they, make Diablo Four. Yes, they their their uh, leak was that Diablo Four was gonna be announced at BlizzCon and got pulled back, and then Blizzard reached out and said that's totally false. But we are probably gonna get Blizz, uh, Diablo Four next year. Yeah, and also the, a lot of materials that were part of the Diablo Four teaser probably rolled out. In re- it was smart of them not to roll out. A Diablo 4 teaser yeah. after announcing the mobile yes. game. <laughs> probably. That's probably <laughs> smart. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go against my better judgment and do one more gaming story. <laughs> Ooh. I can't wait to hear the marketing department on this. There are rumors out there that PUBG, Will's game of choice when it comes to Twitch streaming, I like murdering people. is headed for PS4. Now, I think it's actually announced now, isn't it? Is it announced? 
It was a rumor yesterday because people had found assets on the PlayStation Network, um, uh, art assets, but no sort of accompanying release date or anything else like that. I wanted to ask you, the reception of PUBG on the Xbox has not been good. Uh, the game is a little laggy. The game is um, suffers deficiencies compared to the PC version. Um, it's, it's improved greatly since it was launched a year ago. But it had a rough go to Did start. You- and compared to something like Cod Blops Blackout, which was designed for the console first, it yeah. seems like like it has it still has a fiddly UI and stuff like that. It's not it's not a and, and great not that port. the PC version is perfect by any means. It has its Hashtag own problem. PUBG. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the launch on PS4? I think Are you it's excited great. More people it? playing PUBG is better. Yeah. I think they should make it free to play. I think the whole world should be able to play PUBG. More more grist for the mill. Oh, a, look at you. Yeah, it's like, wow. like you know how to play that game after three years of playing it. Only a year and a half, thank you. <laughs> I'm a noob. It, but if you play it 24 hours a day, then you well, can I did, argue, I, like, We did not play 25 like, hours of PUBG. That would have been a bit much. All right. It's a little stressful. A bit much. Yeah. They did get that like one, one tasty chicken. Only one. Only one, but it was worth yeah, it. It we was got so a, we got a second. We killed a bunch of zombies in one line, too. All right. Elon's back at it. He had announced on Twitter that... Come down to Hawthorne, California, because you can go ri- on a ride with me in a tunnel. Now I'm fucking doing voices. Beautiful. Look at what you've done to me. Beautiful, dude. <laughs> this Hawthorne, what California. What are you Welcome. doing to me? Hi there. You want a tunnel ride? And he posted a uh, a video of of riding through a tunnel. Let's that is go. A, that is a fast ride in a tunnel. I would go. Yeah, it Why looks not? fast Let's and it. it looks tunnely. That looks too fast. Mm. Uh, a, would you have gone on this? I would. Uh, I wouldn't have been the first person. Yeah, yeah. Let let somebody else go yeah. first. Yeah. But like tenth, tenth yeah. ride. I'm I'm down with. It. I'm super down. What's gonna happen to me in a tunnel? Nothing has ever gone wrong in a tunnel in human history. Okay, moving on from that statement. Whoa. The uh, I I think this looks great. I am really curious how about the actual distance and the and the ride experience. Mm-hmm. We have very little information about that. It actually takes a curve in the video too, so it's not yeah. just a straight shot. It looks kind of boring, though. Uh, we should we should do a minor correction. Last week, last week we Jeremy, I believe, said that the Tesla wouldn't auto stop if you were going above fifty miles an hour and there's obstruction in the road. The autopilot, the increasingly poorly named autopilot. Uh, several Tesla readers or drivers wrote in to say that that is actually untrue and it does stop, whether it's supposed to or not. But that's a thing that happens. Hmm. So yeah. yeah, there you go. All right. Well, Norm has a message for us. Let's listen to what he has to say. He does. This week's episode of This Is Only a Test is also brought to you by MailChimp. MailChimp is an easy-to-use marketing platform with a name that might make it look like they only do email. But they do just about everything to help businesses grow with email ads, postcards, landing pages, audience management tools, automations, reports, and more you know you're doing marketing right. Growth looks different to everyone. So MailChimp helps guide you make the right marketing decisions for your business. Create a customer list, create an online store, test an email variation, or analyze a marketing report. MailChimp understands business owners would rather focus on their passion rather than focus on marketing. So they automated the marketing process to make it easier for you to get back to doing what you love. MailChimp started by doing email marketing, but now they do so much more. You can say they outgrew their name, and now their marketing tools can help you do the same. Go to MailChimp.com to sign up for free and see how MailChimp can grow your business. MailChimp, they do more than mail. Now it's time for a moment of science. You know what I'm really excited about? We got three pretty sciencey people here. Yay, so nerds. this is this is like such a departure where Norm and Jeremy go to sleep for this section. I love science. Yeah. Let's I read a talk lot of about media, it. I heard. So let's do let's give the listeners what they want and talk about politics and science. Yay! <laughs> We're coming off the midterms. We had a lot of scientists run for office, mm-hmm. a lot of changes because of this. So we're not actually going to talk about the midterms per se, but what we think some of the effects are. Um we had about 20 scientists actually run for office. Most of them got uh, eliminated in the primary. Um, about seven or eight, depending on how, if you consider a dentist a scientist. 
Mm. I think that's so. so. I think so. I think so. They get a lot of shit out there, so I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Uh, one, which I think is, uh, I think the lens, the narrative around this about all these scientists running for office is pretty interesting because for the most part, it's been negative from the press. Like a lot of scientists ran, but they ended up losing. But having some victories in, in the funding apparatus, I think, is actually important if you care about scientists actually holding office. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's important um, that we have people making representing science in the legislatures. I don't think they necessarily have to be scientists, but if they're people that listen to scientists and have science advisors that are good and aren't telling them things like, you know, women's bodies have ways to reject Anyway, there's all yeah. sorts of bad. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. all sorts of terrible examples of Republicans being bad at science. Hey, I don't know if I, I I buy that because I would say Republicans on as a whole in this country have funded science mm-hmm. um, in ways so their actions haven't lined up with a lot of the rhetoric. Yeah, uh, they they have a history of of the last hundred years of funding science in a very good way. It used to be that we viewed funding science as a way that we maintained American excellence and leadership in the world. And then we stopped funding science. It was inconvenient. Is the yeah. thing that I and found. And now we fund science mostly either as branches of military research or space research, well, that's which is not entirely true. I feel like we the still NIH do a lot of other fundings, still but yeah. anyway, yeah. But no, you're not wrong. I think yeah, it's, no, no. Uh, right. I, I want to highlight that there are, even though there is a couple re- Republican losses, there's a few losses on the Republican side that actually might not end up being great for science. Um, Carlos Curbelo. Cub- uh, was the co-chair of the bipartisan House Climate Solutions uh, Committee or caucus? He's from Miami, right? Yeah, he's yeah. from Miami. There's always questions about the viability of the, of that caucus, but at least it was it existed and it was bipartisan in nature. So I actually think that's a bit of a, a downer. And then John Culberson lost in Texas, and he was a Republican that was very much in favor of fan, uh, funding a number of NASA missions, including mm-hmm. their Europa mission. Yeah, yeah. Which even is even though we're not supposed to land there. No, I think a Europa report tells us, the movie tells us, like, let's not land there. Well, I mean, it says land, but just don't walk around too well, much. Well, but the, the, no, like the, of the methane model is just said, bad. all the other planets are yours except Europa. Attempt no landings there. <laughs> it's just simple. It's, I mean, that's a pretty clear message to me, that documentary. See, that's where started the first place the I would go, though. Ben. And and like and then you know they blew up Jupiter. So it's like, I don't know. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. You know well, what are you gonna do first? You're gonna go to that curtain and be like, I mean, if you're a little who, who dog, there? who's there? Who's in there? Trace, are you generally excited about the results when it comes to science? When it comes to science, I mean, I think any to kind of echo what you guys have already said that anytime there's scientists represented in our political discourse, it's gonna be better for everyone. Only because science is not like. Um, science is not magic. It is a way of thinking about the world. It's a way of asking these questions that then you go out and get answers. It's one thing to say, like, I think I know how this works, and then run with policy. It's another thing to say, let's go find out how this works. And scientists would do the latter, and people who don't like science would would probably do the former. We don't have, like, a lot of evidence. There's also a lot of, you know, like, one could argue both sides. There are scientists who are not great at being scientists. Yeah, scientists in the are same dickheads way, too. Right, yeah. in the same way as anything. But I, I think it's great to have more representation in, 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 just across the board in terms of science and also across the board in terms of different types of people represented. I mean, this isn't really science related, but like now we have two Muslim women, we have the first Native American, we have like all of these different people who are now representing uh, just a wider view of the country. From talking about science and politics, let's talk about one of the most important retirements in all of science. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is this is a sort of a this is three hundred years coming mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. One hundred thirty years for this particular item that's finally being retired. Yeah. Say adios to the kilogram. kilogram. Wow. Kilogram. Wow. What's going on, Trace? I do. We're going imperial, right? It's back to pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so the kilogram is based on a specific weight. Uh, one like kilogram. I was that is gonna be yeah, like, wait, that a yeah, that's, a, that's a big shiny. Literally ball. exactly it's one kilogram. It's a physical kilogram. thing, though. It's yeah, a ball. it's a physical thing, and it's called Le Grand K, <laughs> and it's based it, it the 
international standard weights and measures yeah. in Europe, and they're going to retire it. And the reason they're going to retire it is because, well, one, it's controversial to just have this one, and everybody has to bring other kilograms and measure them against this one and say, okay, yes, that's a kilogram. They Take have, that like, back a to really your country. Precise balance, like with yeah, a really they long have arm. a super precise setup, so they can say this is a kilogram. Take your standard back to your country. What happens and if like a piece of lint gets something on the, gets the, screwed the, up? The real kilogram. Honestly, they know. only do it about every forty years. They yeah. bring it out. Like I, I feel like you it's can't like touch it. Super special it oil on day. it. It's like crazy. And I had heard it was getting smaller. Right. Yes, it's, it's also getting smaller. Radioactive yeah, less decay. Massy. Mm -hmm. So it's shedding atoms. Like wow. soon we will be weighing less because of this kilogram. No, right. we'll be weighing more because the whole kilogram weighs less. Oh, fair. Well, we'll have the yeah. same amount. I don't want to gain. We'll have the same amount of mass though, and that's the important. But no, I will weigh less. All that matters. not. <laughs> so, but but okay. So over the last like forty years, there's been a process with the with the system international right to move away from measures based on like the length of the king's foot yes and more toward things that are mathematically defined based on constants of the universe yes so and, and the this, speed of light for yeah. example in the vacuum okay it's constant so we can take 3. that 3.8 times 10 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second right yep. so okay. they defined the meter based on that speed and they said a meter is one 299 yep. millionth min change of the speed of light so instead of saying wow. a meter is the dividing, you know, the Earth by so much, no, 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 we'll just take this constant from the universe and divide it by the number that already exists, and this is the meter. So what constant gets us the kilogram? <laughs> um, let me see. I've got it written down. Uh, the kilogram is the Planck constant. The meter is the speed of light. The second is the vibrations of a cesium atom. It's so many vibrations. The ampere, or current, is the charge of an electron. Uh, mm. Kelvin is the Boltzmann constant. The mole is the Avogadro constant, which is just fun to say. And then the candela, which is the one you never hear about, I feel like. Well, that's a luminosity measure. Yeah, that's and that's the efficacy of light of a specific frequency. This is according to the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. Yeah, that's funny. So I get Planck's constant, which is like, you know, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, but I think it's kilograms meter squared per second or something like that. And so because kilogram is in it, they're able to use it to define what a kilogram is. Oh, you can go back out and work the other way. So what do you do with the ball? What do you do with the kilogram? Somebody's going to chuck take, in the trash, right? take it home, right? I think don't don't you want Sotheby's to put this up for auction? Yeah, it's gonna go to how great it's gonna go would to the it belongs in a museum. <laughs> sure, more growly. I think it belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gamer. <laughs> I just think yeah, you know, the kids will buy it and you put it out there. You They're gonna cut it into a bunch of equal pieces and distribute it across. Uh, so like I just want to see. A, yeah, yeah, I want to see a bidding war for the kilogram. Would you buy a shaving? Of the original no, kilogram. No, no. Is it out a those. precisely wall. measured shaving? Is yeah, it like one microgram? Very precisely. The most precise. Mm. I, and I then hang those. it on your wall with a picture of the thing. Like people Here's do with movies just, they like. snort it. You know, like you, they, you people love it. good movies. You find it there. Yeah. Smoke yeah. It. You're like, and I'm going to smoke it. a little bit of kilogram, <laughs> man. I'm going to get this. What's the kilogram made of? Is it like Palladium iridium alloy. We probably don't want to smoke that. That would be bad. Yeah, I don't think that's bad. I mean, it's good for you. Maybe it'd be real good. It's real shiny, though. I mean, it's real shiny. It's very shiny. If you haven't seen it, look up a picture. It's very shiny. Yeah. I don't know how they took that picture without the camera being in the picture, actually. Probably long lens. Really? It's all lies. I, I yeah. want this to go up for auction. How much would you pay? If you had endless amounts of money, how much would you pay for a kilogram? Well, if I have endless amounts, what is well, it? Well, okay. okay. I'll give you made. What's a fraction just, of an infinity? What if, you, what if you're just a usual old U.S. billionaire? How much got, would you put down for it? Let's say 50 I got, bucks. How do you think you say a billionaire? It's pissing away money on kilograms left and right? <laughs> no. You gotta hold on to that cheddar. No, you're right. Actually, yeah, but... you, 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 what you do is okay, you okay. build a big lobbying organization, and you get a bunch of people elected that are going to give you massive tax cuts at the expense of the middle class. Oh no, no, no. we're Hi. we're done with that. No, we did that. My name is Trace. You guys, please add me. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> Oh my God! Norm's not going to let us be on this show anymore. <laughs> uh, he's off for another two I or three weeks. I think I would. I would probably. Let's say I'm a nouveau riche billionaire. I would pay like a hundred million dollars for this. Just because you'd give why a not? tenth of your, your <laughs> yeah. net no, worth. No, I'm billions. We're saying I have multiple, multiple billions. billions. So still instead a... of a tenth, maybe a twentieth. Because it's like you know, there's only one. You know, this is a pretty good conversation. Your, your starter, car though. doors aren't going to go up like this for long if no, you're pissing away money on right. kilograms not, left and right. I don't mind mm -hmm. which way my doors you're go. To be honest, I'm too tall for those, those other doors. Oh, Stand man. up, you hit you, your head. You, uh, yeah. That's a stupid door. I don't care how many commas you have. Think of how tall your garage has to be to get a McLaren door in there. You're driving around with the doors open. 
I don't know. You like you get to get it open without hitting the ceiling. Oh god, yeah. that's a San Francisco thing. I yeah, feel that's like. a, we have very we short have such thing San Francisco. In the Midwest, garages. my garage is so tall that you then. I feel like I just started a joke. Like that like two, fish was so you big. Park a car like, on top yeah, of your other you car. Can park two cars on top, and then you can park yeah, your mom's car. Kids are gonna buy dig. tall garages left and right. They a want lazy them. boy on they the front yard. They can't get enough of them. Yeah, the impressions again. All right, I'm gonna transition us to another story, and then Will's gonna track it back to. Uh, trickle down economics somehow. So let's talk about alien uh, alien asteroids. They're not going to save us, Kishore. <laughs> Oumuamua. Yes, which is like. Uh, is that how you Hawaii- say it? Yeah, Oumuamua. Okay. Which is a Hawaiian word for like um, mm. coming from elsewhere or oh. something yeah, like that. I looked it's it like up for uh, the video we did on it. Oh, on uh, colonialism is what the word is for. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop it. <laughs> so, Trace. Tell us about you did a video on this. We did what a video is this? about it, and we talked to one of the astronomers who discovered it, which was really cool. Um, who helped kind of spot it, and they it's a an asteroid that's coming at us at a weird angle, so we don't know as much about it as we want. So the latest story is just they found out more about it. Well, it came and went. It's it gone. came, yeah. It zoomed really fast through our solar system, and then Too took fast. like a left turn. Actually, depending on which way you're looking at it, it could be anyway. Took a turn and then sped back out again. So yeah. we saw it just as it was getting toward us. So we mostly were looking at the back of it, as I, if I recall correctly. Mm. And it was tumbling, is my understanding. It was right? tumbling, but it was tumbling in a weird way where it's like they think it's oblong and it's tumbling kind of. If you think of a, a disc that you're spinning in your hand, it was tumbling in that direction. Was it an interstellar fidget spinner? Yeah, exactly. So that means if, if it's tumbling on the flat axis, then that means conceivably you could have had centripetal force pushing people out at the end, so it's like a Rama situation. Maybe, but they think it was long and thin, so more cigar-shaped. And but they, they, I mean, again, they only know what they've been able to bounce off of it, and I'm pulling this from memory, so it could be it could the, be the thing I read said that like most most sometimes. of our observations consisted of basically one pixel, and all of our yeah. stuff was inferred from the luminance of that pixel yeah, based so, on, yes. on time. Yeah. So as that luminance changed, they sort of inferred that it was tumbling over itself. The reason we're talking about this is one of the dumbest stories in science it's so this stupid. year. It's because uh, it's aliens, man. And because they think it's aliens. They're coming. Well, two Harvard astronomers published a preprint on uh, on uh, archive.org mm-hmm. that basically said, like, we can't explain why this thing is going so fast. It's going, like, you know, 25 meters a second faster than it should be, meaning, like, it must have come from extra... Uh, extrasolar object and come in with some speed. We don't know why. One e- explanation is that it could be radiative pressure pushing on the asteroid, speeding it up. The idea of like photons literally hitting this and pushing it forward. So like a light sail with a laser from the home base? And that's exactly what they said is like, what if this thing had light sail technology on it? Would the math work? And that got translated to Aliens. Holy, holy well, crap. Aliens put light sails on an asteroid. I mean, just to be Ugh. clear, it, the reason they were having this conversation in the first place is because it accelerated in a way that was not explained by the gravitational slingshot of the of the energy right. that lifted right. from the, the sun when it flew around assist, it. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, so they're I, just I, trying to explain yeah. a math inconsistency. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they probably made like a kind of rhetorical mistake in their paper <laughs> yeah. to suggest this because it opens up this idea. But really all they're trying to do is explain this speed differential. That I'm, exists. But, I mean, the. I'm not going to talk about the Space Force. Arch. But, I think you just brought it up. But, <laughs> just a, no, no, no. See, that's how it works. You say, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm God, not going to say God, that God. the Space Force is an idiotic idea. <laughs> but, but what if this is an Independence Day situation? What if, you know, this is the this is the scout team to see if we're ready for harvesting? They're coming to take all of our water, man. Well, then somebody call up Brett Spiner and start okay. working on viruses and get them to Jeff Goldblum <laughs> immediately, right? Uh, does anybody yeah. on his, and so he can upload them to an alien device. Where, does Mac? Does anybody have a 1999 Power yeah. Mac right, working still? Can I we think you could probably okay. get one. Yeah, we can okay. probably find we one. Need this a is fleet, tested. You can we need a fleet of biplanes immediately and yeah. give them to Randy Quaid, not Dennis Quaid, Randy Quaid. Wait, was that it was actually the biplane? In the, that was just in the deleted scene, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I can't no, remember. So. They, so, I'm pretty impressed with our knowledge of independence. I've watched independence Day a lot. I really like that movie a lot. It's very it's a good. Fantastic, film. yeah. Um, documentary, so. documentary, yes, yeah. fantastic documentary. I, I do want to point out there are a lot of these papers. They come out. I don't want to say yearly, but almost every year, a paper hits hits the hot sheets. That's like, hey, there's aliens out there. That was a Men in Black reference, by yeah. the way, just because there was talking about. Yeah, anyway, talking about yeah, another Smith, great documentary, yeah. really expose. Yeah. If you could. Anyway, so you know about Michael Jackson, right? <laughs> Alien, <laughs> yeah, all the obviously, way. yeah, makes sense. But they come out because if a scientist does all this work and is like, look, we can't explain it 
we can explain 98% of this, but the other 2% could be a lot of different things. It could be, you know, something we don't understand. It could be, you know, dark energy, like I'm just pulling things out of a hat. It could be aliens. It could, it could be and then the media says, whoa, whoa, go back to the third one. Like, yeah. and they run with it. And it, this is just another example. I think I saw a lot of science communication Twitter jumping all over this. Jason Major tweeted about it like right away. And Katie Mack is tweeting about it constantly. <laughs> Somebody and, tweeted me and it was like, what do you think of this theory? I'm like, that it's wrong. And that's yeah. all I wrote back. <laughs> right. I think <laughs> I, I just feel a little bad about I that. I think I response. just read, comment <laughs> tweeted because I was, <laughs> I was like on Wi-Fi for a minute while I was camping and I saw it and I was like, what? And so I quote, quote tweeted and just wrote no. <laughs> Because it's like, but, it's, but what if, man? Well, then that'd Look, be great. Even the scientists are saying it could be that, but they're not saying it is that. Yeah. The good news is if it is actually aliens, we're probably okay. Because if they wanted to wipe us out as fast as that thing was moving, all they would have to do is aim at us. And, you know, we'd, Which is just we'd a be a slight big course correction. chunk of right? rubble in the middle of a solar. We'd be a new asteroid belt. Yeah. Then so, we'd yeah, be, we got that going for us. That would really accelerate climate change. All I mean, right. <laughs> I want to bring this back to our big story of the day which is about poop because trace really brought up poop as like a real quintessential 2018 item and so gentlemen have either of you been constipated before in my life yes yeah i'm asking personal questions only because... after i had my appendix removed ah so hmm. what's funny about that and this is a very um controversial theory is that there's linkages between people that have developed parkinson later in life to early bouts of constipation like uh, early as a child or early no, as a young like adult? In, in a later stage of their adulthood. Hmm. But they've always tracked the symptomatic relationship and has wondered why this exists. And so uh, in Parkinson's patients, they've identified a protein that tends to clump near the neurons that end up degrading. Clump it's is called, the wrong word. Eh, that's actually how they use uh, that. But it's just reminding me of poop now. I know. Well, this is a poop whole neuron. poop story. Millennials are really into poop, I it, heard. Yeah. But this alpha synuclein protein essentially clumps together. It's sort of missing folding in sort of a way and uh, they think that might be helping degrade the neurons faster huh. and when they tracked where this protein could be coming from like what is leading to this like protein misfolding mm -hmm. has brought them back to protein development in the appendix huh. <gasps> eat more prunes R related what? to potential constipation um, uh, starting periods of misfolding of this protein and it's sort of propagating through your nervous system almost like telephone wow god the gut it is, is a so really cool. i just want to emphasize this is not like settled theory it's really controversial there's a lot of people that don't think there's enough evidence for this right but it's one of those that what i the reason i put this in the story that i think is really important is that we oftentimes think of neurodegeneration and all of these you know, class of of neurological disorders as being a brain disorder. That something's happening in the brain. Yeah. Yes, something's happening in the brain. But more and more, we're seeing whole body system, like holistic issues in your body predicating that result in the brain. Well, I mean, a lot of that probably comes from the fact that for a long time we assumed that the blood-brain barrier was more or less impenetrable except for two really specific things that, the, the you know, like energy, like ATP and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And, and while yeah, we learned cool. from Joe DeRisi on the horrifying podcast you did with him a couple you weeks ago. our very special Halloween yeah, episode. That the brain biome tends to be pretty pure. I still think like this idea of proteins oh, actually propagating is is a constant issue that we need to, to really be so, thinking about. hold on. As a no appendix person that got constipated after Parkinson's. my appendix was removed, does that mean I'm pro or anti Parkinson's at this point. Recently published, there are four studies that came out in the last six months that indicate that people that have gotten ap appendectomies have had a lower instance of Parkinson's. Yes! Oh, suck it. I think this I'm is gonna not... I'm going to cut that freaking appendix out. I can do out. it right now if you want. I played Even the game. I'm go full Kardashian on this uh, and This is cut one of those there. crazy things. They did analyze like the the health patterns of 1.7 million Swedish citizens. That's how they pull a huge database okay. to actually come up with these statistical effects. I don't bl believe this one totally yet. I think it's more like it's just pointing to an area of, of really deeper investigation. Hmm. That's cool. I mean, it's, it's interesting because like you, these stories are the ones that stick. It's like the guy that discovered a pylori is the cause of most stomach ulcers, right? Mm -hmm. He was a crank for a long time. And then all of a sudden they, they started, you know, he drank the a pylori, took the medicine. Turns out he didn't get ulcers. Right. And people that discovered any of those gut microbiome kind of things yeah. were, looked, were laughed at and poop transplants and all of these things. Yeah. People laughed at them for a long time and now they're like, oh shit, the gut is kind of important. 
Totally. We should maybe pay more you attention know, to this. So, by the way, after Sequence that episode of, Jesus of Still Entitled, it. where that came up, I've made T-shirts that say "Sequence of the Jesus" oh, out of it. Those. Can I get yes, one? I'm going to Ooh, cool. um, gift them out. I, I, like. I like. Uh, Gina listened to it. She doesn't never listens to stuff that we. My wife. You should listen to it if you haven't. Um, it's pretty great. Good. And and like it's there's so many things that like you wonder if you have. Uh, uh, you know, a parasit- parasitic type infection that's causing something that is there. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, sequence the bejesus out of it. Sequence it. Joe was great. We should have him on. I'm going to find a way to do um, to get that T-shirt publicized. I have a pitch to Norm being like, "This should be the tested shirt." I mm. have over the years, just for the record, found that like making T-shirts based on a one-off podcast joke has been. A mixed commercial bag. <laughs> I'm not looking at this as a commercial success. Okay. It's more like I actually did it because I was going to give it uh, as a gift to Joe because I think it's really funny. Yeah, he. I mean, look if if he that's a good catchphrase. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah, we, I had a lot of internal arguments about how to spell bejesus. B e g e e z u s. I would have put, put, put a J in it. Yeah, sorry, J. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, that was a, the, we're back to Jif Jif, uh, and also yes, Z for sure. Yeah, Z, Z for Z, sure, Z, right? Z, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why did you think? It's not more like, like no, no, no. It's not I, like did you think B, somebody in my life argued argued for the S instead of the Z? I'm like, no, that's like wrong. B that's Jesus, hundred yeah. percent wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's no, it's like a yeah, okay, it's like, a, like weird, it a weird, mashy. Yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. you're exactly. not talking about the the yeah the Christian the son of the Christian God Yahweh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Will has got us back there. Wow. I, I think we should you just move away. You mean the people away. that, mo- like many of the people in Congress who yeah. really oh, no. feel that way. Oh. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just best me. to not, you know. Well, speaking of that podcast with Joe, one of the things that came up was talking, I think the one that really stuck with me was the story of the German eyeball. The amoeba lady. Uh, no, the, oh, the, the, uh, the dude that yeah. was growing rubella in his eye. There was a lot of eye horror in that episode. There yeah. was a lot of eye horror. And I think that's the perfect transition to trace a story about the cornea. Oh, this yeah. Is really cool. This is really neat. So um, the cornea, it's the front of the eyeball, the clear part. It's like the, it's like the screen protector for your eyeball. Yeah, exactly. And it's really, it's really interesting because the, the, the cool part about this story, firstly, it's about bioprinting of corneas. Um, Bioprinting is awesome. It's just like 3D printing or actually it's more like inkjet printing mixed with 3D printing because you use lasers to sh- you just spray cells onto a substrate and then you use a laser to like heat it up and bubble it. And then once it's in, the, then you let them kind of grow after that for a couple of weeks. So it's like, like let's control how they're distributed on the substrate. Right. Okay. So you, you squirt them across the substrate in specific layers and different cartridges, just like an inkjet would have like collagen or epithelial cells. Then once they're on the substrate, you mature them for two weeks. So they call it 4D printing because you need that extra time. Although, I don't know. I think that's kind of weird. The fourth dimension is time. <sighs> I get physicist students who tell me it's not all the I mean, time. they're right. So imagine you could take 3D space and fold it so that two points of 3D space were in a in a point, and yeah. that's that's the fourth dimension, man. Totally, totally. I watched a video. <laughs> you watched that same video that I probably watched with the, the one the, the the 13 dimension one yeah, is yeah, really it's good, very good. I'm going to say that we should link it to the show though. notes. No, I think we're there not, are some things we're not going to do that. Yeah, don't just Google it. It's fine. There's a, there's a you can Bing it. Um, so anyway, IE Spectrum had a write-up about this. It was super neat because they said essentially their, their crux was with the rise of self-driving cars, there's going to be fewer corneas on the market because cornea donation comes usually from car crash victims. We and are, motorcycles, yeah. And, and motorcycles. We're literally entering Blade Runner territory Which I now. think is freaking fantastic. Well, One, I mean, that pros people cons. are dying. But two, that they're like, oh, well, we're going to think ahead and say instead of, you know, worrying about it will grow them can we get like a goat cornea or something like that i i don't think so our eyeballs are pretty Cor- specific corneas are weird right because they're not they're not aerated there's no there's blood no flow, blood to the flow. They, they get their nourishment from your tears and in chemicals and that come out in compounds that come out of your tear ducts so that makes them actually easier to print because they're just layers of tissue okay so they can print them quite easily and they think that this they're currently testing it in animals could make up the difference now that we're already seeing between car and motorcycle crash victims and what is needed out there in the world. Because we need a lot of cornea. We need Corneas a lot wear of out. They, they can get infected. You can get problems with the cornea that cause it to become cloudy and you lose your vision. But they're so if we can print them and just put them back on, the surgery is actually relatively I th- simple. I think what's 
really challenging about this is you have to have a completely smooth surface because any sort of like uh, space between the layers is going to seed growth. Mm-hmm. I'm really interested. It's like I have thin corneas, so I'm not able to do like LASIK or, or or eye correction for my for my glasses problem. So I wonder if I could get it. Like I feel bad taking a cornea from somebody who can't see right. to thicken up the old eyeballs there. Yeah. But if I could get, if I could get, uh, I think that's what the dark web is for. Then you're not for, taking, oh, you know, man, just go on there, just go to a corneas. clinic and yeah, no problem. Get some pills. And you get some a flight fresh somewhere, corneas. some country. You're good okay. to go. Okay, um, but I mean, like, but, like if I could get my my eye sculpting and then just smack a synthetic cornea on the top, right? that would be dope. Right, I'd and be it would just that. be like, oh well, I can buy one and, and thus I'll get one. And it it comes out of um, Wake Forest, which I, I visited and talked to some of the people there, and they're really good now at printing tubular organs as well. They're having trouble like with solid organs. They can mm-hmm. do any tube, so intestines huh. and esophagi. That makes sense in a 3D printing that's context. That's really interesting because there's, there's a lot of like stomach cancers and stuff that end up with you completely losing parts of big your, chunks of your digestive tubes. tract. Yeah. yeah, and so they can do blood vessels, wow. um, and they're learning how to do those. They're having trouble with solid tissue like livers and kidneys and a heart because its muscle is still – it's hollow, mm-hmm. but it's it's got solid parts, so it's difficult. Uh, funnily enough, they're also be- getting pretty good at penises. Oh, because it's essentially tubular. a tube organ, yeah. um, and so that's good for their wounded warrior project. So if okay. you get your yeah. dick blown no, off, you can just get a new one go. that they grew in a lab, which is so great. It doesn't huh. necessarily work the same way, but it can make people they, feel whole again, which do you is think awesome. They that's call cool. it Thingiverse for that too. Selecting <laughs> which one <laughs> that, that was worth it. <laughs> the VR minute, virtual reality this week. So no Jeremy, no Norm, mm. but we still have a William Smith yes. that's going going Hello. to do the hard carry through the VR area. Um, I think we have to start with this: all the news surrounding the Facebook reorganization around Oculus, both both for VR and some of the AR projects they had. Mm-hmm. And I think this is this is really just an open question: like, do you see this reorganization as a healthy move forward? Like. What are your general thoughts around it? I mean, we talked about this a little bit last week um, with the uh, Brendan Arriba leaving amid rumors that they had killed a more ambitious uh, Rift 2.0. Um, I, I mean, I, it's unclear to me. I, I'm I, I'm a little uncomfortable in general with a giant faceless multinational corporation, especially one who our relationship as a society with is as fraught as Facebook's is right now, owning a substantial part of the hardware for what is, I think, the next interface for computing in terms of VR and AR. Mm. Um, I, I'm i interested to see, like, I, I think we're not going to know whether this reorg is good or bad until we see what comes out of it, right? If the reorg, if the Which goal of the reorg middle. is to get revenue out of these markets now, it's probably good for the industry long term and bad for Facebook right now. Because they're they're still way too early to be thinking about extracting real revenue mm-hmm. from either of these. If it's if it's to take over more of the market, figure out ways to take over more of the market without Facebook spending trillions of dollars, that's probably bad. I don't know. What we'll signals see. are you going to be looking for from them? Because like we know, I mean, Oculus Connect really set forth what they were, what the roadmap is for the next six months. I mean, I at think, least I think that the things that I'm thinking about are not six month or 12 month or two year problems. I think they're five and 10 year challenges and we won't know for a long time. Mm. Um, I think, I think we'll see when they start buying up developers, when they start buying up hardware companies, when they start gobbling up different, if they start gobbling up different parts of the ecosystem, you think acquisitions are a possibility on the, on the near term horizon. I, 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 there are definitely people making interesting products. Um, and, like, here's the thing. I, it's really tough to say what Facebook's doing these days because they're under such fire for their 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 for being know, Facebook, yeah, yeah, for for doing Facebooky stuff that was fine for ten years and now all of a sudden isn't. And I think that they have a real crisis in terms of what what does Facebook look like going forward? What's acceptable? What isn't? What's going to get them you know investigated by the House next year? Um, and and how do they navigate this new reality where? You know, they're not seeing user growth in North America anymore. They're not seeing um, uh, the the kind of stuff that they're they're used to. 
and and how they react to that and whether they make a you know Microsoft had similar problems if you think about it 20 years ago at the end of the 90s when they had a massive operating system monopoly and um, they saw federal regulations that came down that ended up being ultimately kind of toothless but fundamentally changed the way Microsoft does business and and made them aware of the cost of stepping over the bounds as a as a giant tech I mean not exactly a monopoly but kind of a monopoly mm -hmm. um and and facebook's in a similar situation how they react how zuckerberg reacts and how they uh, shift the company to address the new reality of their responsibility as a place where almost anyone can have a voice as big as say the new york times is is uh, uh, the challenge that they face right now and i think the ar vr stuff is actually the smallest part of that Look, I'm not embedded in the VR, you know, culture as much as as Norm, Jeremy, and and, and you are for sure. Uh, but I, you know, you can see the tone of pieces that come out right now that are just unsettled about the future of Oculus in general. And and I think the that tone existed before Brendan left, and I think all of that has just heightened what was has been in existence for a while. All that being said, I feel very differently about it. I mean, I think there's big questions about scale and and a return on a lot of this investment that, that Facebook's made. But in the short term, uh, I feel like oh, there's even more stability with some of these departures, like that there is like a more of a focus emerging on what it's going to be. And people might disagree with what that focus is going to be, which it seems like they're going much more in on the quest than than we thought. Um, with uh, if the rumors are true, well, that, the quest uh, hi and the inside out tracking, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but they're moving away from whatever this higher end d developer rift that was rumored that you know Brendan was shepherding. Maybe we don't know. I, I see that as like that focus is only going to be a benefit to the industry as a whole. So, um, I you know it, it's it's tricky because. If you look at what we could do today if we had, say, eye tracking in the headset and higher, much higher resolution displays where we could do foveated rendering and run stuff at like mm -hmm. eyeball resolution inside the tiny circle in the center of your field of view where it actually matters, that's really interesting and compelling. But right now the market kind of doesn't support, it doesn't support that, that kind yeah. of technology. And and I think realistically we're it's not until we see you know, tens of millions of people using VR every day. And the question, like Quest is a product that will get us to tens of millions of people running VR every day. I and hope so. So I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, mm. I really, I think at this point, I mean, I think the interesting thing to me is, is that Facebook is spending time on this when they have much bigger problems um, I happening. Would, I wouldn't be, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to think that Facebook is only spending a very small amount of time oh. on this and the, as part of the larger picture. Yeah. Um, because like you said, there's bigger fish to fry. Like they're going to be talking to congressmen a lot next year. Yeah. That's probably. my well, assumption. And just to, I don't know as much either as about VR as, as you will, but I talked to some uh, students at Berkeley yesterday. I was talking to them about digital media marketing and I a ended up asking them about 360 video because uh, we used to experiment it with, with it a lot at Discovery and at Seeker. So uh, I asked them how many of you have ever seen one and not one of them raised their hands, which I think if somebody was going to get them to watch that, it would likely be, it would be more likely to be a Facebook Instagram style product than probably a lot of other products out there. So Facebook has a lot of power in this area. So the, the challenge of that stuff is that like up, the people who invested heavily in 360 have almost all bailed out of it at this point because nobody likes watching it except for maybe people who are watching porn. Mm. Um, and the rest of the market kind of like the cost of developing true 3D stuff is really expen is really high mm -hmm. and it's challenging. So I, I mean, I, I think I, I like I said, I think until we have a real platform for computing inside those headsets. So you can do things like check a pop up in a browser, mm -hmm. you know, check your Twitter feed, uh, check your yeah. email, check your text messages, that kind of stuff while you're doing something else. It's a little bit difficult to say whether consumer VR and that kind of scale is going to take off yeah. in a way that, that, that is matters for more than just gamers. Yeah. I'm going to burn through a couple stories because we don't have much in the VR minute this week. Um, Oculus TV has released, uh, according to some users on Reddit, some full gamepad support if you sideload on. What's Oculus TV, Kishore? It's the thing in the Oculus Go. Like, like the watching yeah. watching videos on the, okay. Yeah. 
That's fine. That I sounds mean, nice. Yeah. I think this is just natural to have gamepad support. What, it's a better control. What kind of gamepad can you use with an Oculus Go? Like one of those Android ones? It's uh, they Looks like Mad the Cat's one. Micro, uh, a Logitech three F310. Oh. IP, uh, this person did one with an X-Bone controller, okay. yeah. which is great. That's what bunch. you want. Like the Bluetooth X-Bone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to get one. Oculus Go now has a case, a portable carrying case, nice. um, according right. to Upload VR. That's just good. chuck mine in a bag with a microfiber over the lenses. Have you yeah. um, have you had any problems with that? No. I mean, that's how I. That's literally how I carry every VR headset that I carry around with me. No, oh, he's I very. Put it, I put careful. it in a microfiber bag, and I put a microfiber. I put a giant. You just put it like a two foot square microfiber that I pack into the face hole, mm-hmm. and uh, that protects them well. And then I don't I like the idea of a case though. If it if it does that for me. Yeah. Because otherwise I have to carry around all that microfiber stuff. Yeah. And I tend to, I have so many sure. pairs of glasses where I just lose that anyways, right? So I, I'm shown as not a good user yeah. for this. Uh, and the final story comes from Jeremy. It's a story about real go karts, real, you know, those ones you see at the, the racetracks. Yeah. And VR. It sounds like a great idea. This, what, how? <laughs> how, how is it, it a great like idea? Like people are driving real go karts and wearing VR while doing so. Like, I mean, imagine wearing looks like, like they're an, wearing riffs. Yeah, it does look like they're wearing riffs. So, I don't know where the computer is. Probably in the go kart. Um, yeah. it, it must like. be in the back of the go kart, but they're driving through, um, you know, a real go kart real track. Mario Kart because that awesome. No, I mean, that's, like all, we want. Wipeout. that's, that's all, all we want. want that's all we want to do. That's what we want. I want Wipeout. That would well, also fine. be fun. Fine. That would also be fun. Yeah. I agree. But, but know, only if you can take the shortcut through the house and the PlayStation. The story shows like kind of a futuristic, almost like F1 type track. Mm, less fun. Uh, and you're driving a real go-kart while wearing a headset. I've never understood the while you're in a real experience that's already fun. So, while yeah, adding VR on yeah. top of that makes that so AR, much better. I think I could see AR making that fun. Well, so the reason you do it, though, is that you get um, – you you like it's really hard to, to simulate centripetal force. I get why it happens. So it feels real. Yeah. And it looks fake. Yeah. But feels feels real while it's looking fake. Like that's an interesting – we're in a we're in a phase of VR and AR development where people just try things to see if they're cool and maybe they are and maybe they aren't. I think this is firmly in that maybe it's cool, yeah. maybe it's not category. Yeah. And there's a massive licensing opportunity for these guys to do a you know right now it's fifty bucks an hour to go to the go kart track, but if you want to pay an extra twenty, you can play Mario Kart while you're racing. Oh, if it was Mario are, Kart, we're yeah, done. Yeah, we're done talking yeah, about this. We're gonna, we will all go. Have you played that Luigi, Luigi's Mansion arcade game? I have with the big giant vacuum cleaner. Imagine if you could do that walking around in a big warehouse and sucking up actual ghosts. I I have I would been do a that. big proponent yeah. of the location based uh, VR entertainment where you're walking around rooms and. Yeah. Uh, I, I've even the ones that have very poor kind of VR systems in it, like the uh, I forget what that open OS thing that have where you're carrying tracked, uh, you know, yeah, guns yeah. and stuff. Even that's really fun. Yeah. Um, it's not always the most replayable, but like, you know, the void um, like Star Wars experience, like Norm and Jeremy really liked it. And I but and you're that's not going to do keep, that three times. You're, you're not going to do, do it once and be, you're you're gonna, done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think there's a, a real market for that location based experience. This doesn't quite do it for me, but I would probably try it out. So. I'm interested in this. It seems incredibly dangerous. And also, I don't see them wearing helmets. So I have to assume like I've done the fast race cars down in the, down the peninsula. Where you're going like 50 miles an hour? This can't be that. Yeah, and I can't, be. can't imagine that you're going that fast with these because no, no. that would be terrifying. Yeah. Also, let's just one more. Wear a helmet when you do go karting. Yeah. Well, sure. Come on. You should. Your brain is important. Protect your brain. On yeah. that note of protecting your brain and watching out for constipation, especially if you still have an appendix, I think that wraps it up for us this week. Yeah. Great um, place as any to leave it. I think. Uh, Trace. Yes. Where can people find you and the stuff you're creating uh, now? If you look for Trace Dominguez, uh, I'm everywhere. D-O-M-I-N-G-U-E-Z. You're the only I'm Trace E-Z. Dominguez. I'm the too. only oh, one. Really? Yeah, there's I've only one of me. If you look for me. Trace, you're going to find a lot of people. But if you look for Trace D or Trace Science, you'll find me. I'm all over. i got a YouTube channel. I'm making science videos every week. And then I'm on Twitter. And You've put out some Facebook. great science videos lately. Do you want to plug really any fun. of them? Yeah, the most recent one I did was about if you watch cable television, which I have done a lot more since I'm now a freelancer, there's an ad that runs almost every hour about Prevagen. It's a drug that allegedly comes from jellyfish and it's supposed to help you uh, remember better, especially people who are older. And I looked into whether or not it is real. Is it real? 
we should watch the video. But I'm older but, and I'm yeah, curious. So I should, essentially, I feel like that's probably a snake oil situation. Let me put it this way. It's one of two things that they isolated from this specific crystal jellyfish. One of them won a Nobel Prize, and this is the other one. Ooh, oh. so it's probably pretty good. <laughs> other one. Other <laughs> one. <laughs> Will, what, what are you up to these days? Um, I make cartoons with virtual reality uh, with uh, the, Foo show, the Foo VR. Um, and then I also play video games pretty much every night on the twitch.tv slash not that Will Smith where you can find me. It's totally enjoyable. Thank you for the one listener That's that sent in day. some uh, wheel pins to uh, adorn us uh, this week. Yeah. Those uh, are nice. And I just, I just want to say for all of my brothers out there, that was an excellent stream, charity stream over oh, the weekend. You. And it was really delightful to be a part of it. Uh, it was funny because like I went back. So after... 25 hours, we went 9 a.m. to 9 a.m., which is the way to do a 24-hour stream if you're going to do it. Because you wake up in the morning, you eat some food, and you jump right into it, and then the next day is horrible. So I went uh, afterwards, I went to sleep for a little bit, like an hour, hour and a half, and then I had to go to a kid's birthday party at one of those inflatable bounce sounds house places. Perfect. Awful. That sounds amazing. And I was delirious running through obstacle courses. And like normally when you do that and there's a bunch of five-year-olds around, you kind of pull back a little bit, but I was just going for it full speed, <laughs> like leaping over the obstacle courses, landing on my shoulder, rolling, all that stuff. That sounds like and you had a other, lot of fun. The other dads were very impressed. I had one of those at my 30th kind of birthday party. I'd be, Did you, you going to pump it up? No, we, it was like a big Batman themed oh, yeah, 30 by 30 good. foot one. That sounds awesome. It was really fun. So I, I highly recommend them for adults. Yeah. I have a couple things to recommend for listeners. Um, one of my favorite books, I think my favorite book, science book of this year, is called All Over the Map. It just came out last week. Ooh. It's by former Wired Science blog editor Betsy Mason and Greg Miller, who also wrote for Wired Science. It's basically a history of all these different maps for different purposes, like cool. from science through oh, cool. history. I love maps. It's this book that National Geographic put out. is beautiful, and the types of maps in there range from brain maps to geologic maps to maps that you understand. The cholera outbreak maps that you haven't heard of from England back Ooh, then. It's mm, really great. Cool. It's one of the best books I read. And then my wife has put out a board game called Where To for Youngins. Uh, she works for a company called Little Passports that's available now. Uh, and so it's her first board game. What? And like my seven year old is totally addicted to it. And awesome. hopefully yours can be too. Yeah, it's good to get seven year olds addicted I've to check things. that out. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's not the stuff you find in the basement of your Winnebago. Also, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is weird, I'm going to wish a happy birthday to myself yeah, yesterday. Happy birthday, Kishore. Happy birthday. Sorry, I didn't Thank know you. you wanted to make a big deal about it. but, but uh, I'm yeah. going to say it now that it's in the past yeah. for all the listeners. Yeah. So now happy they can so don't tweet him because yeah, it's don't like tweet you're wasting your time. Yeah. You missed it. I'm going to tweet totally you. Not but make a note for next year tomorrow. All right. on November the 7th. And hey, it's a, a Mass Effect Day. What are you doing? <laughs> not helping. You know, it's also Bobak for Dowsey's birthday. We're birthday buddies. Really? Your birthday pals? That's a good one. i got to text him. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday, Bobak. All right. We have an outro from Kerber, and it's called Jungle Book. Hi there. I didn't see you. That's it. Isn't there like a boy that's raised by a wolf oh, in that one? this one? No. No. That's Jungle Book. No. What am I thinking of? Jungle Book. No, I'm not thinking of Jungle Book. You're literally thinking I'm of Jungle not, Book. I'm literally not thinking of Jungle Book. <laughs> I miss Jeremy. I miss Nora. Hi there, I didn't oh, no. see you. It's just the outros never stop. Check out my SoundCloud. <laughs> we actually need more outros, so please send them in. Thanks, everyone. Bye.